Open your Bibles to Galatians chapter five. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you today about how the Holy Spirit, how the power of God works through you. Um, it's gonna be incredible. Last week we talked about why do you have the power of God? Uh, and it was so incredibly insightful and encouraging. And so today I want you to get that too uh, for what the Lord has for you. But just to recap, uh, the first week we talked about, how many were here for the first week? Raise your hand. Do I got some people following along? Great. Okay, we, had, we talked about the beginning of a hero's journey. A hero has his calling. Every hero is called, right? Uh, and everyone is called to be a hero. You're not a sub-character in your story, right? How many heard me talk about that? On the list of credits that go through your life, you're not bodyguard number three or like, you know, he's store clerk number two. You don't even have a name. You're just an extra. No, 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 no. You're not an extra. You're the star. Turn to your neighbor you like and say, you're the star. <laughs> How many, if you did get turned to, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> You're the star. We talk about your calling. We talk about your character. The character of every great hero is a self-sacrificing, selfless, not selfless hero. And then, of course, we talk about the critics. Every hero is going to have their critics. It's not to listen to the one, but to listen to the one, right? Not to listen to that one hater, one critic, but listen to the voice of God in your life. And then last we talked about in the first week was the battle cry of every hero. And then last week we began the journey of a power, the power of a hero, and why God gave you that power. Like he told his disciples in Acts chapter one, he said, wait, here and I'm going to send the power, the Holy Spirit on you so you have power to be a witness in all Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So you have three things, if you didn't get it last week, uh, for uh, why the Holy Spirit is with you is number one, for doing. I love the scripture we used. The kingdom of God is not a lot of talk. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of doing. It's a lot of being. It's a lot of seeing the power of God. And then number two, achieving. And number three, reaching. So doing achieving and reaching. And that's why you have the power of God with you. Not for any other reason, but for those. And then today I want to talk to you about how the power of God is going to work in you. But I first want to ask a question that I also asked on Facebook and social media is if you could have one superpower, and, and for those who are new here to Covenant Church, relax, we're going to have fun today and, and be responsive because you know what? Breakfast or feedback is the breakfast of champions. And uh, you're looking at a champ up here, folks, okay? Uh, so give me good feedback because you know what? This is going to be incredible, and I want the Lord to speak to you. And, and if you could have one, one superhero power, what would it be? Would it be to fly? How many would choose like I, I could fly? I've had dreams where like, man, I, I would love to fly. I would love, or super strength. How many would love super strength, right? Yeah, yeah come on. That's what I'm talking about out there. Super strength or uh, somebody else put that they would have uh, time travel. Time travel would be, or one of them put, I'd like to be invisible. I have a few questions uh, for that individual, uh, but I, I think maybe, okay, you want to do that. Uh, or maybe you have, you uh, want uh, lasers coming out of your, I don't know, or Maybe you want, how many want x-ray vision? You want x-ray vision? Because I'm going to be praying for you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love you, Colton. Uh, we're, we're, we, we, there's all these superpowers. Maybe that you want yours to be more practical, right? I just never want to get a speeding ticket. That could be a superpower, right? Or I... I I want a hole in one every time I hit that golf ball, right? Some of you guys and girls out there love to golf. We have all these different things that we could uh, trade and these superhero powers and these fictional things that we talk about and uh, all these things that may not be true, probably aren't really possible or real. But what I'm gonna tell you today is how the Holy Spirit will work in you. This is not a fictional story I'm about to tell you. These are not things uh, that are superficial and not tangible and not really uh, available to you. What I'm gonna share with you is not a movie. It's not some dream. This is reality. Come on, some believers in the house said a good amen. amen. What I'm gonna share with you today is very much real and evident today. The power of God is with you. It's not just some, I want to be strong. In fact, let me just share one story with you before we get going. I had these young men, we were traveling all over uh, the United States doing school assemblies, and we would do feats of strength, and it's really just tricks. You know, there's the ripping the phone book, you get it the right angle, bats, snap them the right way, bricks, same thing. I'm, 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 I'm ruining a lot of tr things out there, trade secrets. Uh, but, you know, we'd go there and we'd show them, and so one of these kids, I was like, hey, we're in Montana, it's very cold. I said, hey, do you want to do the brick? 
brick breaking. And he said, yeah, I'll do the brick. I was like, do you know how? Yes, I know how. Okay, do you know how to get them, set it up, do all that? I said, you're in charge. He, he said, yes. So he went and set it all up. He got all the bricks ready. Him and his buddy were ready to do it. And I'm telling you, they were up there and they, they went ahead. Now we count down and I'm staying in the middle of the stage. And I'm like, all right, if you want to see these guys, break these bricks for Jesus. And we're like getting everybody screaming and hype. And they're like, they're, these guys are 18 and they're, they're mine. They're like, I hope I break them out. And they're like, so they come up and boom, and then disappear below the bricks. Not a single brick was moved. And their arm was just dangling on top. He goes, and like he had broke his arm, just broke it. And so he's like, no, no, no. I was like, well, because I was about to go to a different route and say, you get off the stage and let me deal with this and then we'll do it. We'll go from there. He was like, no, no, I can do it. I can do it. Let me do it with my other arm. So they go with the other arm and he's like, boom, same thing. <laughs> Broke his other arm. So I'm not even going to attempt to do these, right? So I walk over there and I push him over. And I say, sometimes the enemy wants to stop you with tricks that he has up his sleeve. And obviously there's one because there's rebar in each and every one of these bricks. And I said, this poor young man's going to get medical attention. But let me tell you how the Holy Spirit's going to bring wisdom in your life. <laughs> so... <laughs> We're going to talk about real power from God that brings great wisdom and understanding to where you're not just this powerful vessel that has no direction. We're going to see how God uses you in an incredible way. But first, I want to talk with you. Look with me in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. I want to show you how not. So there is a how not to. And let me just give you this for life. This is a good life lesson that uh, my pastor, my mentor gave to me. Sometimes an easier and quicker way to helping define who you are is first defining who you're not. So to define who you are, sometimes the easiest or faster way is defining who you're not, right? Process of elimination. I'm not this, I'm not that. And so you define that. So it helps show you really who you are and who you're called to be. And the Bible clearly talks about there's a work of the spirit and then there's a work of the flesh. Romans chapter eight tells us that we're free from the law of sin and death and the work of the flesh but free to work in the spirit. And so let me show you first how not, how the Holy Spirit doesn't work in your life and how the opposite looks, right? So that we understand. So look with me in Galatians chapter five and verse 16. It says, this I say then, oh, by the way, I'm gonna read in old King James. So this is gonna sound a little different, but it's gonna give us a clear picture. If you're reading in a different translation, it's still great and I'm gonna explain it, but I want you to see this first. And I say, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the, lust of, uh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. So I'm just going to list them out. Some of them are very self-explanatory. Adultery, fornication, which adultery is very simple, right? It's sex outside of marriage. Fornication is sex before marriage. Marriage, sex was meant for marriage. Marriage is meant between a husband and a wife. And so we understand these things. Then it goes into uncleanness, right? Lasciviousness, which is another word for lust. Idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft, let me just give you a quick understanding for those who don't understand. And it's not all voodoo and, and, and some mystery thing. A real easy definition of witchcraft is this, and I want you to write it down so you remember, is manipulation. Manipulation is witchcraft. It's trying to get what I want, and I'm going to manipulate emotions. I'm going to manipulate the atmosphere. I'm going to manipulate the circumstances. I'm going to manipulate to get a specific outcome. That's not how we do it. We talked about last week that the Holy Spirit is not a force. I don't use God. Does that make sense? I don't use the force. It's not a force to be used. The Holy Spirit is a who. It's the Spirit of God in us. And we're not meant to just use it to get our own outcome. It's not some party trick, right? Wait, watch me turn this water into wine, right? That's Jesus' call. That's not your call. How the Holy Spirit wants to work in your life, he's going to flow in your life. So then it says this. Then he says, it's idolatry, it's witchcraft, it's hatred, it's variance, which is discord or division. Emulations, where we get our word emulate, but it's very, uh, the better picture would be jealousy, to understand that we're not meant to be jealous over each other. Wrath, strife, and then there's an interesting word that I, I had to look up the definition. I want you to see it with me. The word is called sedition. 
It's seditions. And it means incitement of or resistance uh, or ins insurrection against lawful authority and government. So it means incitement or resistance against lawful authority and government. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's a clear pi picture that it paints in here. And when you see, when you really know uh, what it looks like and what the Holy Spirit's saying, this is a work of the flesh and this is the work of the Spirit. Because you can't hit a target. You're, sin means to miss the mark, right? I missed the mark. I messed up. I didn't hit my target. But to know, right, if we know and we can see the target, it's much easier to hit the target, isn't it? It's much easier to understand that I'm not going to miss my mark because it's been illuminated and I can see. So right here, we see seditions and we can see it in our nation right now. We're not meant to fight and war and cause, and I don't need to go into all of that, but we're meant to not work in the flesh. Then he says heresies, which is anything against doctrine and biblical teaching, envying, murderers, drunkenness, and reveling. Some of your of, uh, definitions may even say something a little more graphic, orgies, which everybody take a deep breath. I'm not going anywhere crazy today. I just want you to understand and have a clear picture because my job to be a good pastor is to teach the word and not say, oh, not that one, right. not that piece. Oh, just, just a little, come on, can we get to a point? I, I just want to get to a place where we can actually teach truth. And I could come in here and not say, hey, here's another rabbit out the hat. Did it make you smile today? Did you go home with a warm, fuzzy feeling? And are you all happy? And everybody, we got to be, okay, there's a great time to leave encouraged, to leave strengthened, to leave bold and say, okay, man, I'm, I'm good. I'm uplifted. And man, God's not here to kick you while you're down. So don't get that message either. But there's got to be a level of, 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 as a body of believers and as, Christ, as Christians that we got to rise up and say, I need to hear the truth, not part of the truth, not scriptures that only fit me and that I like and that we want to hear, but scriptures that we need to hear because that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our life is to not just give us what we want, but to give us what we need. And so we need to hear this. Come on, Covenant Church. We need to be able to understand that God is calling us and those who are viewing at Maricopa Reentry and all online, I encourage you, wherever you are in your walk with God, you have to be able to say, God, I'm gonna, I, need, I, I want you to speak to me what I need, not what I want. And get into the truth. Because when the wrong things leave your life, that's when the right things begin to happen in your life. When the wrong things leave your life, that's when the right things begin to happen in your life. And I hope today you make the change. I hope today you say, okay, I'm going to discipline myself to walk, not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now, let me show you, I want to show you five different things. So write down one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to show you five different things of how the Holy Spirit works in your life. Number one, of course, it follows right after the passage. We just read Galatians chapter five, verse 22. How many know the fruits of the spirit? In fact, why don't you put that scripture up there for me, guys? Because Jesus is the fruitfulness of our life. So let's read it. Gentleness and self-control. Oh, that's the end of it. All right, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. You want to follow God? Here's a great passage to live by. And if you're new to the faith, I'm not going to preach a lot on these fruits of the Spirit, but let me just tell you a couple points. Number one, the fruit's not, all, not just for you. The fruit's for others. How many have picked a fruit off a tree? Is the fruit for the tree or is the fruit for others? The fruitfulness in your life isn't for you, right? It's for others to receive from you love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, right? We're supposed to be able to say, okay, God, uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to produce patience in my life because patience is it for, it's patience for other people. Come on. Somebody said a good amen. It's patience. It's love. It's gentleness. And let me just get rid of this old way of thinking real quick before we move on. Uh, there's a lot of talk out there. I, I've met one man and he used to say, well, this is just the way I am. No, I, 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 I'm gruff. I'm just, I'm naturally, if you don't like the way I am, I don't need to. And he just gets in a rage. Did you know what I asked him? I said, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> that began that conversation. I, I'm just, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you know, our job as believers is to hug that cactus, <laughs> right? And to show love when we don't want to show love. 
show patience when we don't want to show patience. But let me tell you, you're going to hug them till all those prickly pears come off and they're going to go somewhere and they're usually going to have to be pulled out of you. And you're going to say, okay, it's all right. I have peace. I have patience. I have gentleness. Look, don't make it your excuse that this is how I grew up. This is just our, our family talks loud. We yell all the time. That's how we work things out. No, that, that's not that. No, no, no. Hear me. No, that is not how you do it. Like Kevin Hart said, no, no, right? We, we don't need to operate that way. We need to operate with love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness. We need to operate in patience. And we, we're, we're supposed to produce this fruit in our life for everyone else. The next thing I want to show you is this. Look with me in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in verse 4. He is the gifting of my life. How is it going to work through you? How many have heard of the gifts of the Spirit? Raise your hand. The gifting of your life. So I want to read these real quick and then I'm just going to briefly touch on a few. All Wednesday this month, we're talk each Wednesday night, we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit so you can come to get a deeper dive into that. But I just want to highlight a couple and tell you how the Holy Spirit's going to work through you. Now it says this, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Everybody say that common good. Why did the Holy Spirit want to work? Why does he want to work through you in the gifts of the Spirit? For common good. There's doctrines and beliefs out there that teach the working of the Spirit is, is of the past. It's for the apostles. It was for that time. No, 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 no. It says for the common good. And what greater time in our nation's history, in our world's history, do we need common good in our world to say, okay, this is for all of us to benefit from. Right? Do you hear what I'm saying? We don't need this not gone because if you believe in, in God, if you believe in the Holy Spirit, then you don't deny any gifts or fruit of the Spirit. To deny a gift is to deny, to deny the gift. We don't deny the gift. The gift is the Holy Spirit. How he works through us is through these gifts. To each one, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. Sometimes gonna, God's going to download some wisdom into you. To another, a message of knowledge. He's going to give you a word of knowledge by the means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. How many need faith today? Uh, another, gifts of healing. Healings are for today. If you've never seen a healing before, that doesn't mean that's not real. I I've prayed for people in this church and watched cancer go away. We've prayed for people in this church. I prayed for a lady in Michigan and watched her get up out of her wheelchair, stretch her arm that was withered, and watch God heal her right before my eyes. The gifts of healing are for today. They're for you to work and say, okay, God, what can you do? Amen? Amen. Then to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy. Just a quick note here. The Bible says that, or Paul teaches that he wishes all would prophesy. I wish every one of you would prophesy. Every one of you. Now, prophecy is not some mysterious thing. Prophecy is simply, is simply speaking into tomorrow, speaking the promises of God, an encouraging word. Because the enemy is great at reminding you of your past, and it's super easy for everyone to dwell in our present and our problems, but only the power of God in your life, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can bring a word of encouragement about what tomorrow may bring. Because we know who holds our tomorrow. Amen, covenant? the church. We know where God has, our, he has it in his hand. So it's easy to speak for us about tomorrow because we know who holds it. So you ought to prophesy every chance you get. Then the other speaking in different kinds of tongues and to another, the interpretation of tongues. I'm sorry, I skipped one, the distinguishing between spirits. All of these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Pastor Emily and I were just down in Mexico. We drove all day to be back here uh, to, uh, for this morning and we got here. Our team is doing incredible and God's moving in a great way and we kept praying everywhere we go. Okay, God, how do you want to lead us? What do you want us to do? And, and, and my wife, wife leaned and she said, hey, I really believe we're supposed to encourage this pastor and pray for him. And he was kind of at the back and he was smiling and having a good time. And he, he wasn't really coming towards the group. I'm like, ah, oh, he doesn't, man, he's, he didn't want these gringos. Like he just wants us to go, like do our thing and leave, you know? And I was like, I really didn't want to be invasive or, you know, or rude, or I don't want to be tokenary either. Oh, you're just good for our Instagram account. Let's just take a good, that, that's terrible. So I was like, how do we, oh God, what do you want us to do? So we brought him over and I said, hey, you know, we 
started to speak over him. And, we, and they would interpret. We started to pray over him, and they would interpret. And then he began to share about how he's never felt more discouraged in his life right now. And he's battling with depression, and he's, he feels like he was left alone out there, and that there's no one supporting him, and no one there. Come on, the Holy Spirit sends you to people. That's why that's the discerning of spirits that, God, what are we supposed to do here? What is supposed to happen here? And some of you know how to read a room, and some others are figuring it out. But let me tell you, when you get in there with the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know how how to read what God is doing. You can read what people need on their face. You can read the environment. And that pastor, by the end of us, just praying and speaking over him, not only we're we gonna continue to support him and help him, but he was crying on my shoulder saying, thank God he sent you today because I needed somebody to be here with me. That's the power of the gifts of God. Come on, covenant. Let's give God some praise. Right? Break for applause. There, that, that is where we get excited. I have to say this because you know what? If we don't get excited about what God is doing, we'll never see what God can do. But God is moving in some people's lives and he needs us to say, okay, it's time to celebrate. It's time to get excited. And that's how the Holy Spirit's going to work in you. Number three is this. John 14, verse 26. Write it down in your worship journal. He's going to be the comforter and helper of my life. It says, but the helper, or some of your versions may say comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Let me just tell you another great way the Holy Spirit's going to work in you before we close today is this. The Holy Spirit is going to bring to your remembrance things you don't, you, you don't know you read or studied or, or learned when you were younger. The Holy Spirit's going to stir stuff. How many has that happened before? I've been in a situation, I, I, I never even knew that scripture or heard that word before, and all of a sudden I'm in a moment and the Holy Spirit says, now's the time. You may be even in here today and you're like, how does this apply to me? And you're trying to figure out how does this fit for me? And, and the Holy Spirit's saying, no, no, just receive because there's a moment coming that I'm going to bring this to your remembrance. And you're not even going to know, remember when or how you heard the scripture, but you're going to speak it to that person who needs it so, so immensely in that moment. And that's what the Holy Spirit does because he says, apart from the Holy One, there can be no understanding. So let me tell you, every time you open up your Bible, before you just like, hey, I'm gonna, pastor said we gotta read, I'm gonna read the Bible. So we open it up and we start reading and we fall asleep. Before you fall asleep, next time, pray before you read because the Holy Spirit is going to bring understanding. And then the two points I wanna share with you that are so vital in this, in the comforter and the helper, it comes from a Greek word, that's why there's two words that we get. And, and, and it's very appropriate because he is the helper and the comforter. And let me just give you a tagline to go with it. It's not so that you can be comfortable. Have you ever, some of you who are married, how many are married in here? Got a great helpmate. I got a great helpmate. Uh, my wife, whenever I'm being negative, she's positive, right? She kind of like, you balance each other out and you help each other. How many have a friend like that where you're just like, when you're in a bad mood, they're like, hey dude, come on, we can, we can, we need to improve. They're just that helper to pull you out. They're not beating you up over it. They're trying to help you out of it. That's what the helper is. Some of you may call it conviction. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit to say, you're better than that. Come on, you're better than that. No, 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 not that way. Let me help you. Let me guide you. Let me lead you into truth. Let me teach you in my ways. I need to show you what I have for you. He's going to be the helper. He's going to be the comforter. And the comforter, really simple is, right? How many have ever been in a position in your life where by all means and circumstances, you should be going crazy, pulling hair right out of your head. <laughs> and you're like, somehow you came to church, you've got it together and life is going to be okay. And you're like, how? some people, I even ask you like, how are you still of a sound mind? And you're like, only by the grace of Jesus. So you're just like the peace of God, the comforter in my life. If you haven't experienced very much life, then you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you experience life and you've experienced how some times and even the worst of situations, the midst of your storm, there's some un un crazy peace on you that surpasses everything that's understandable. And you just, oh, thank God he's the comforter in my life. That is how the Holy Spirit works. And then number four that I want to show you as we begin to close is this, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. He's the intercessor an advocate of my life. That's how he's going to work through you. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, right? We do not know what we ought to pray for. This is very key for new believers. 
but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. God is going to be able to speak for you in times where you can't speak up. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that where I couldn't speak up, I couldn't argue my case, right? It was, I couldn't fight the rumor, I couldn't fight the gossip, I couldn't fight the hatred, I couldn't, I couldn't speak up against all this. I had to remain silent. And I hit my knees and I'd, I'd pray and, and my wife and I, we'd seek God. And all of a sudden, we'd see how God used the Holy Spirit to make intercession for us, become the mediator in our life, the advocate for our life. That all of a sudden, he started vindicating. Come on, if you've ever fit faced a situation, maybe you're facing one right now where you can't plead your case. You can't fight that rumor. You can't fight that gossip. You can't fight that situation. You can't continue to argue with all the craziness. How many have ever had that moment before where you've got a friend or a loved one who's just like, dude, you need to shut up because everything you say is making the situation worse, right? Come on. And, and continually, we, we fuel, instead of just being silent, we fuel the fire. Well, this is where the Holy Spirit's saying, just sit back. I need you to sit back. I need you to go sit and pray. I need you to go sit and read. And I'm gonna become the intercessor for your life. You don't need to fight your battles. That's what my job is. You don't need to continue to battle against everyone and everything. That's my job. Let me be the advocate for you. Somebody in this house needs to hear this word today in your heart that you don't need to fight every battle. You don't need to make every argument. You don't need to prove yourself every chance you get. You don't need to try to constantly, constantly, constantly establish and try. No, no, no. You need to back up and you need to allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and then go before you just like Paul. And Paul said, he's going before me. He's making a way where there was no way. He's opening doors and he's opening hearts. And the person who used to be my enemy is now my friend. The person I used to be fighting against is now the person I'm fighting with. God is going to turn some things around for you when you allow the Holy Spirit to be the advocate and the intercessor in your life. And it's by simply inviting him to say, okay, Holy Spirit, you're in charge. You're going to make intercession for me that I I don't even understand. Thank God he did, all of our prayers haven't been answered. Thank God he knows what we need more than what we want. Thank God he goes before us and every time we think we know the right way, he's got a better way. I thought we were gonna buy a building uh, uh, just uh, seven months ago, eight months ago, 10 months ago, however long it was. And I'm like, we're gonna have to spend 6 million and 3 million. We can't do this. How are we gonna do this? And God says, no, I have a better way. I have, I, have a, I have a place. I've already marked it. It's debt-free. Everything's taken care of. And you're going to help continue to grow the kingdom of God. And we've been here for six months and God provided a way. That's awesome. And now we're already growing. Every week we grow. Every week we grow. And every week we see missions expanding. We see, if you've been around church long enough, you know that planting 150 churches in another foreign country within the first seven months of launching as a church, you know that that's next to impossible. But with God, anything is possible. I, I want to share this last point with you and then we're going to close. Look with me in Ephesians chapter one and verse 13. He's the seal of my life. Some of you didn't know this, and I want to reveal some great truth to you so you can take this home with you. This is, this is meat. If you're a believer and you know the Lord, this is going to be very deep for you because a lot of Christians, if you ask them, why is the Holy Spirit in your life? How does he work in your life? They wouldn't know, and this is one of the greatest reasons. They talk about gifts and fruit, but this, I believe, is, is the most important reason. And he says this, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, how many believed in here? You were marked in him with a seal. Now see this, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. 
The Holy Spirit is the seal over your life. Just as much as a king used to put his seal on anything that was his and say, this is my letter. This is my endorsement. This is my approval. This is my kingdom. This is my decree. This, just like that, the king has put his seal on your life and said, this is my spirit. I'm with you. And when I come again in my second coming, I've made a deposit into your life that I'm gonna come and I'm gonna call upon. And everyone he calls upon that has the Holy Holy Spirit is going to be caught up and go to heaven. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. It's the deposit and the guarantee of your eternity. Do you hear me? Yes. So powerful. We cannot just disregard how God moves through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the seal, the deposit, the guarantee of our life. We need the Holy Spirit. Not just for what the Holy Spirit can do through us and how he can work in us, but for what he establishes in us, that he puts the king's seal, God's seal on us, says, this one's mine. This one's mine. You belong to God. And there's a deposit. You know, there's an old term that we used to use. Some of you shoppers will know what I'm talking about. Layaway, right? You used to put a little money down. Anybody like, you know, I'm talking about a little bit older in here knows what layaway is like. And you put a little money, you come back, winter time be coming, you have that winter coat almost ready, pay it off right before the season hits, you be ready. God is saying, look, now he could afford it for sure. But what he did is said, I'm making a deposit because one day I'm coming back. I'm making a deposit in you because you're mine. I got to put you over here because didn't he call us? He said, you're separated. You're set apart. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood. I need you to set you apart because I need to make a deposit in you because there's a day that I'm coming again. And I'm, I, the way I'm going to call you home is because of the deposit I've made in you. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to pray with you today to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want to pray with those today who want to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. It's going to be your opportunity, whether online or right here in this room. So will you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? This is your chance. This is your opportunity. First, I, I want to give a moment for anybody in here and anybody under the sound of my voice, if you want to be prayed for and say, you know what, I want to see the fruits of my life the fruit of the Spirit. I want to see the gift of the Spirit working in my life. I want to see the Holy Spirit working as the comforter in my life. I want to see the Holy Spirit working as the advocate in my life. I want to see the Holy Spirit become the seal over my life, if that's you. And those something in that message spoke to you today. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand all around this building and online right now. Thank you for all those hands. Keep them high. Keep them high. Keep that hand high. This isn't a call for salvation. This is a call for the Holy Spirit to work through you like never before. This is your chance. And if that's you, hands are all over this building. Come on. And everyone who's viewing, you're in prison right now. The Holy Spirit's gonna use you and he's gonna put a deposit in you. And he's gonna change your life like never before. With every hand raised and heart that's open, I want you to begin to pray with me. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, Lord, that you're gonna pour out your Holy Spirit. As every believer in here, I want you to begin to just say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, have your way. I want you to begin to call upon the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, how he can be the comforter in your life, the advocate for your life, the seal over your life. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, Lord, that you're becoming all that we need and you're gonna work through us in a powerful way. God, as the gift in our life. Lord, as the fruit of our life, God, you're going to work through us as the comforter and helper in our life, the advocate and intercessor in our life. We submit to you. God, our hands are raised. Our hearts are open. God, and we're beginning to pray and cry out to you like never before. Let an outpouring of the Holy Spirit fall in this place right now. In Jesus' name, God, we pray, God, Lord, that we'd be able to prophesy and speak in tongues. God, that we'd be able to see signs and miracles and healings. God, that we start seeing the fruit of the Spirit in our life like never before before. We'd start remembering scripture that we didn't even know we've heard. God, Lord, that you would bring to remembrance all that we need and you become the seal over our life saying, this one belongs to me. And Lord, in Jesus' name, you're making a deposit in us right now. Come on, receive the deposit of God. You're making a deposit in us right now, a refreshing deposit of encouragement and strength like never before. Some of us haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit in a while. This morning is your morning. You're going to leave here refreshed fresh. The Bible says that a repentant heart brings times of refreshing. Lord, we repent and we turn to you and we seek you this morning, God, and we seek a refreshing outpouring, God, over our life. 
Refresh us, refresh us, refresh us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I believe with all my heart that we're gonna see and hear of miracles and signs and wonders. Healings are taking place in marriages, in families, Lord, in hearts, in our bodies. God, you're gonna do an incredible work and I thank you for it. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, and I wanna give an opportunity for anybody in here. You heard this message, but you haven't turned your heart to Jesus. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. You gotta confess and call upon the name of Jesus. He said, for those who call upon the name of Jesus, every one of you shall be saved. And we're gonna call on the name of Jesus just here in a moment. And if you wanna do that, receive eternity into your life, I'm gonna give you that chance and you're gonna pray a prayer and salvation is gonna be yours. That belief is gonna turn into a lifestyle. It's gonna turn into a walk with God. And your, your tomorrow is gonna to be forever different because of the decision that you made this morning. If that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to raise your hand here or online. Thank you for the hands in this place and the hearts in this place that are open and raised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that heart. Thank you, Lord, for that heart and that mind. Thank you, Lord, for every heart and mind, Lord, ready to receive that's open. Keep those hands raised, and I wanna pray with you. Everyone in here, I want you to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord, as my Savior, as my Heavenly Father. I call upon you. I'm forever yours, and I am saved. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Let's give God some praise.